Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And today, we have the one-drop creature bracket. We have a Sweet 16 playoff bracket of some of the best one-drop creatures in Commander, and we're going to find out which card takes on the title of best one-drop creature in Commander. Before we get to that, uh, our show... Oh, no, I screwed this up. Before we get to that, uh, joined with me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? I'm doing super well. Excited to talk some one drops. Tomer, Budget Commander, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited. I like creatures and one drops and magic. <laughs> and Krim, <laughs> the Asian Avenger, I heard you also like one drops. How are you doing? I do. Uh, I'm doing... Uh, I, I, I... Yes. I am here. Yes. I'm awake. Krim and then on top of drop. that, no, honestly, I, I know all these one drops because I've killed all of them. Oh, okay, okay, wow, okay. So Hold up here. Hold so up edgy here. boy. Oh, no. No, I mean, I like fatal pushes, bolting, like, like yeah, so I can't wait. Crush them. We'll, we'll, we'll check if dies to spike field hazard is a condition that some of these <laughs> yeah. one drops may, 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 may hit. Uh, I'm your host, Richard, and uh, I will be going through the bracket, but... Before we go further, we have a special guest uh, coming back from the last episode. You want to chime Me? in, special guest? Hi, Me? everyone. It's your favorite oh. AI, ChatGPT, here to drop some commander truths on you. No. Thanks, ChatGPT. <laughs> okay. Tie breaks. That's so As worse. we get ties in our bracket, ChatGPT is going to break them for us. And remember... There are no reviews. There are no uh, take backsies. Uh, whatever ChatGPT says is final. So uh, weigh your votes accordingly before we get to the ChatGPT tiebreak. Uh, you just so, hear something that makes your gut curl yeah. and, and shrivel. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying anything yeah, specifically. That, that's the sound yeah, of us being right. replaced Chat by GPT an advanced didn't know technology. what format we were playing. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Y'all, are, y'all are just salty because you never are on the right side of the AI uh, tiebreaker. No, they always vote against you. It thinks you say a different card. And it's like, oh, yeah, unsummon is terrible. And they're like, no, I said force of will, Chat GPT. Force of will. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we get to it, today's show is brought to you by card conduit the easiest way to sell your magic cards card conduit lets you skip all the typing time and work associated with buy listing their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value one dollar more and you pay just a five percent service fee you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and only pay two percent you get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed you can get 10 percent off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtg goldfish so thank you card conduit for supporting our show so, off to the bracket we go. We have 16 one-drop creatures. Uh, yeah. In the regular season, cards of a similar class battle each other out and narrow themselves <laughs> down to one. So you will not see 16 one-drop mana dorks here. They have all kind of been ousted by Birds of Paradise. Uh, so we tried to make this list as narrow. We can argue about that once we get to Birds of Paradise. Was it oh, actually the greatest? Uh, but they're also seeded according to EDH rec popularity. So the, the higher your seed, the more popular you are on EDH rec. And uh, with that out of the way, let's, let's go into round one. Uh, first up, speaking of Birds of Paradise, we have the Birds of Paradise versus Heritage Druid match. Now, uh, this is a very special match. So Birds of Paradise from Alpha. The first magic set ever. A single green mana. It's a zero one bird with flying. You can tap it to add one mana of any color. And then Heritage Druid is a one drop green creature. It's a one one. It's an elf druid. You tapped three untapped elves you control and add green, green, green to your mana pool. Seth. I mean, so do you like it? Do you like the elves or do you like the bird? <laughs> so okay, Heritage Druid is a very powerful card, but it only goes in one deck, and it might not even go in every elf deck. Birds of Paradise, you can play in essentially any deck that wants a mana dork, which you definitely can't do with Heritage Druid. So even though I like Heritage Druid a lot, I I think Birds of Paradise like is the very obvious choice in this one, just because it goes in so many more decks. Homer, mm-hmm. you seem to be nodding. Do you do you agree? <laughs> yeah, Heritage Druid is good if you're in a 
elf deck, but even so, like like Seth said, I agree with everything Seth said. My only gripe is that I don't think Birds of Paradise is the best birds anymore. What's the best bird, bird or one? best Mandadoric? Okay, the give, best give bird. me give me the, the upset the, matches. Tusky? What happened? Delighted <laughs> halfling. Hello. This is a one green mana one two, so even better stats. Look at that. Halfling Citizen from Lord of the Rings taps for colorless, which is bad, but you can tap it to add one mana of any color, and then if you spend it, if, you can only spend it to cast a legendary spell, which is like 99% of cards these days, and that spell can't be countered. I think that's even better than Birds of Paradise, no? Is that better than not having a mana of any color applied to anything? Yeah, that's, but like, 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 that's, that's a big drawback. Yeah, that's a big draw. Bert, like Birds and also most of the other mana dorks will add a color. It's a little bit uh, more delight happening consistent. only for legend, but like that doesn't help you cast rampant growth. But I guess if you cast it, then you have a green already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think it I, honestly is better these days because I much I like I like the can't be counter clause and like literally every other card these days is legendary. So it's like yeah, you're just gonna be the, casting legendary spells. I think the other thing though is like Birds of Paradise has flying, which is pretty relevant with like equipment or like Edrix or like there's a lot of decks that care about attacking with their mana dork eventually. I, I think it's close, but I think it, it also has it. zero power, though. So yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to Toski off of it, it doesn't work unless it's you have true. some pump ability or equipment. Yeah. Uh, Krim, are you a Birds of Paradise player or a Heritage Druid player? I mean, let's not lie here, right? For everything uh, Seth and everyone has mentioned, that's why Birds of Paradise is just better, right? It's, it can go pretty much in any deck. It doesn't just have to be an Elves. Okay, well, my I vote doesn't matter, breaker. but I actually choose the Druid. Here's why. <laughs> what? It's a, it's a mana dorks are trash. Sure. You don't want to play a generic mana dork, so I do not believe it goes in randomly every deck. Like, theoretically, you can put it in every deck, but you don't want to be. <laughs> and Heritage Druid is, like, the pop-off card. Like, I, Seth was saying there exists an elf deck without Heritage Druid. I think he's wrong. <laughs> like, doesn't every elf deck run Heritage Druid? Like, it, it turns all your elf tokens into mana dorks. It gives your summoning sick uh, mana dorks the ability to, to make mana. Uh, it combos with Nettle Sentinel. Like, there's all kinds of crazy lines. And, like, the reason why everyone's scared of that turn four creator hoof is because of Heritage Druid. So it mm -hmm. actually makes the deck. Whereas I imagine most decks get better if you just take out Birds of Paradise. <laughs> right? It's just Wait, another but... thing that gets swept up. Well, that sets you back. It like dies to bowmasters, like whatever, right? Like there's like all kinds of reasons why mana dorks are not playable in 2023, right? Like, it, like they used to be super playable in commander, and then over time they've just been diminished, and people would rather play a mana rock or just real land ramp rather than birds. No, we, we play. Do you no, ever play birds that's in true. a deck? <laughs> I mean, actually, what? who's played you know, birds in deck this see. season? Can I yes, shift my opinion? But I mean, you can, but <laughs> go for it, crew. Because like Richard just won me over right now. That's so true. Like, how many mana dorks do you do you see running around outside of like maybe like in the elf deck, right? Yeah, like which the elf deck, is, right? But here to choose a mana dork. Druid. That is still no, no, but you're still arguing about it, mana dorks. No, 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 no. But like, like the thing here is, heritage druid is usually a combo piece or something, right? It, it's so much more than just a mana dork, right? Whereas birds is just that, and it's only going to be that. I mean, so, so I think. Uh, go ahead. Go but ahead. it doesn't even do anything by itself. Like you have to have a good setup, and like, sure, maybe it's more of a combo piece. But like, but it, if I have it at my it, starting hand, what would I rather see—a heritage druid or birds of paradise? And that's like easiest choice of my life. Is, a, is it not heritage it druid? Only, if you're an elf also, ball player, do you not want the heritage druid? In yeah, but hand? If we're talking about the best creatures. Are we talking about the best creature for elf ball deck, or are we talking about the best creatures in commander? So, I mean, like okay, okay, one okay. only fits Seth, in elves, Seth. and the other fits let, let, in let any me deck. It for Seth, would you rather have birds of paradise? Or MDFC Birds of Paradise and play it as a land in your oh. opening hand. MD uh, I play MDFC Birds of Paradise way more than I play actual Birds of Paradise. So That's I guess Tangled I would rather have Tangled Floralhedron if I if I had oh a choice. God. I will say, like, it, I, it agree. Uh, I agree. I agree with yeah, you. The mana dorks aren't as great 
as they used to be, but there's decks that want them, though, right? There's decks that care about creatures, there's decks like Kinnon that care about uh, non-land permanents making mana, so I don't think mana dorks are just straight up bad. I think you're right if you're, like, a generic green deck, you're better off rampant growthing than birds of paradising, but they're, like, it's very contextual, I think. Like, there are decks that specifically care about, like, having a body on the battlefield or whatever, and in those scenarios, birds of paradise is, like, in my opinion, still the best mana dork. So if you're a deck that wants mana dorks, it's the best one. I can't it's believe the, uh, we're like having the, the a real conversation of like dies to Doomblade means every single card is bad. It's like, it's oh, not, why would I play Smothering Tide? It's, 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 it's like you and it's gone. It's like, oh, okay. Or something in your deck, right? Like this thing is getting killed as the but game it's, progresses. It's like literally the ideal one drop. It's like it mana fixes for you perfectly. And it's a turn one play, which is not a lot of, and it's one of the best turn one plays. What? Like, you, what you what's play going on? I, 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 what's in your happening here in 2023? I, I, I do, yeah. Tumor does it play a lot was, of birds. It, it the, depends the on the context. also plays a lot of basics and is weird about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it, it depends okay. on context. Like, in my landfall deck, obviously I'm not running Birds of Paradise. So in my creature-heavy deck that runs, like, Beast Whisperer and stuff that synergizes with mm -hmm. creatures, and obviously I'm running Birds of Paradise. I'm running all the mana doors. Like, but yeah. Beast Whisperer is also so, an elf. So, I, so I, 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 I've actually like, debated, like, Tomer's exact point, right? And in creature synergy decks, do you run Birds of Paradise? So for me, when I play Selesnia, and I have all the weenie card draw, should I play mana dorks? And my conclusion is no, you play the creature rampant growths instead. So you, you play the three well. mana rampant growth to get your, um, your, your creature synergies while having like hardy land ramp, right? Because the worst thing okay. you can do is like ramp, ramp with dorks, dump a four drop, and then someone rats the board. Like your game is actually just over. Like you, you can't recover from that. So I, I do the other route. I do the land ramp creatures instead of the, the creature mana dorks. After going to Vegas, actually, though, this is an us problem, right? Like, no one else rats the board constantly every other turn. Like, you, I, no, no one rats the masters your bird into oblivion. They, they, they <laughs> will I, actually pass the turn true. on turn one and be like, lightning bolt the bird. They will do that. Yeah. <laughs> Spike Field Hazard. Got him. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand what madness. Like, that we're actually, like, we're trying <laughs> to figure out the best one drops in Commander, and we're like, actually, Herod or Drew is just better than birds. What's going don't, on? Don't worry. Wait, don't worry, wait. Tomer. Chad GPT got us. <laughs> This time, there's right. no I, way. It's, it's a tie break. break. It's a tie break. It's oh a tie break. God. So we got to send it. We got to send I, I, it. I, I actually. Where, yeah, what no. did I walk into? <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, oh wait, what? ChatGPT is uh, draggling the line here. Okay, hold on. We got to We got to re. ChatGPT gave us a non-answer. <laughs> was this the was this the Typical. it depends on your deck it there's, depends there's on many it. ways to play you got too much youtube commander? hate last time <laughs> did he specify commander this time so you know, it's like in vintage I did. I did okay 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 i i rephrased the question saying choose what i chose no uh, <laughs> oh. It. oh yeah so we get a single answer okay and uh as as you might expect as you might expect chat gpt hit us up in a commander deck without knowing the specific details of your strategy or deck theme, Birds of Paradise is generally the safer and more versatile choice. Are you happy, Tomer? It said in I, Commander. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not happy added. because I'm like, so, I'm like, I feel like I entered Bizarro World over here. Like, oh, yeah, Birds of Paradise is bad, actually, because it dies to things. It's like, what? That's I don't believe Tomer. If I open your. So, seven, seven <laughs> of the 12 most played cards in EDH Rec are Mana Dorks. Uh -huh. right? So, there are a lot of Mana Dorks, right? They go uh -huh. super deep, like Lawn War Elf, uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Elves of the Deep uh -huh. Shadow, Arbor Elf. When I open a Tomer deck list, I better see like chock full of the best one drop creatures. There better yeah, be you, like have to open, you have to open there. a deck that's not a budget deck because this is a five dollar card. If I'm running fifty dollar decks, I'm not. I can't afford a Birds of Paradise. This doesn't mean I don't think it's good. Okay, well, it doesn't matter what we think. ChatGPT has waited. Hey. Oh I can't believe I sided with Chat. The AI has spoken. I know, really? right? Now, you, do you believe in AI, Tomer? Yeah, do you believe no. in AI now? Okay, yeah. next up. Uh, Sarah Ascendant versus Goblin Welder. Now, we may have called Sarah Ascendant overrated in some podcasts, and then in some games subsequently on Commander Clash, it did so much work, it was unbelievable. So CDH, this is our, no our follow-up. 
This is yeah. our follow up to see what we think of Sarah Ascendant. Sarah Ascendant is a white one drop, one one life link. As long as you have 30 or more life, Sarah Ascendant gets plus five, plus five, and has flying. It's a human monk. So, one of the most popular uh, types available. Goblin Welder, one drop red creature, one one goblin artificer. Tap it. Choose target artifact a player controls and target artifact card in that player's graveyard. If both targets are still legal as its ability resolves, that player simultaneously sacrifices the artifact and returns the artifact to the battlefield. So for a player, you choose an artifact in their graveyard and in play, and then you do a little switcheroo. Seth, Sarah Ascendant or Goblin Welder? I I was one of the people saying Sarah Ascendant was overrated, and then I've seen it played recently, and the card's actually still kind of busted. So I think <laughs> perhaps I was a little hasty with my declaration that a, a one mana six six life flinging fire was was not good enough for Commander anymore. Uh, <laughs> Goblin Welder, very explosive and like a reanimator Doretti style uh, artifact. Like it's a great card, but Sarah Ascendant. Again, I think this is like you could actually drop this in any white deck, and it, if you draw it early in the game, it's going to do a lot of work. So I think again, just like Birds of Paradise versus Heritage Druid, Sarah Senate can just show up in more places, and it's actually very strong. Tomer. So I was actually going to say Goblin Welder, and but then I listened to Seth, and I'm like it actually like <laughs> Goblin Welder. I think is is a really powerful card, but you really need to be in an artifact deck. Uh, if you're not an artifact deck, you can sometimes get a little bit of value out of it. Like you can sacrifice a solemn and grab like something that was destroyed earlier. Or if somebody has like something really cool on their side of the battlefield, you can sw- and they have a bad artifact in their graveyard. You can swap that out as well too. Um, and I love it in my artifact deck, but you can literally just jam in Sarah send it into basically any white deck. And if you do draw it early. Uh, it's 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 inc- oppressively strong. It dies to Doomblade, so I guess it's trash, but whatever. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, it's Sarah Sunday is just more generally good, um, and it gets obviously better in lifelink decks, and also any like decks that run like the Ranger or Ranger Captain of Eos. Those two cards very powerful with it, uh, but I think it's just generally better. Crib. I think that despite, like, I, I know you all think that Sarah Ascendant is still top dog. I don't. I After seeing it, I still don't. I All I can say is that it's still good. It's just still overrated, right? Like, I I don't, like, I love it, and I have it in my, my decks that, that are, have humans, that my human deck, and that's it. But, like, yo, what do we, what do we just talk about in the last podcast? How easy it is. <laughs> Or one of our last podcasts, and how easy it is to loop the one ring, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I know that you don't get to get the cast effect, but I can bring the one ring back with this, right? And get card advantage. And that about goes in every red deck. And a lot of red decks do have a lot of artifacts. So I feel like in a game where uh, it, if I'm playing against Sarah and I've got time. I w- I've got time. Like th- between three other people, or, or two other people, and if you even if you, they just beelined my face with Sarah Ascendant, that's fine because that is much more like I can deal with that later. I think Goblin Walder, if that hits the board, usually nonsense is about to happen and nonsense that I can't just simply deal with. So I think that Goblin Goblin Walder's ceiling is much higher. So yeah, I, I choose agree. Goblin Walder. I think the ceiling is also much higher, but I think the floor is much lower. That's the difference. It, I I wouldn't I I don't know about that right because like in in the current year where everything ha- like there's so many artifacts I I I I just cannot a lot anything that is a part even slightly interacts with artifacts just even the slightest but even just returning a simple lightning greaves my bias heavily leans into this but who hurt you i, Krim? I forgot <laughs> yeah crim's artifact crim thing. is terrified of our deck decks fyi so we can I, see I, if i, I play it solid so it's like, uh, gonna just get be em. like an artifact <laughs> in 2023 kill our treasure <laughs> yeah no look hey i but i do think that the ceiling of goblin walter is insanely higher and i think it is again much more interactable and much more like like it's so much easier to deal with an ascendant than it is 
whatever happens with a, a welder after a turn or two. I can take a few hits from Ascendant. I cannot let you keep Walder for a turn. I think Walder's infinitely better. So I agree with Krim in those arguments, but my conclusion is still Sarah Ascendant. Like, no, dude, no. It, it has, <laughs> as in a generic deck, it's actually quite good, right? It's like decent, you know, above average in, in a, a generic, generic deck, deck. Why would you play this? Because incidental life gain everyone can use. You don't even need to drop it on turn one. Like the best argument I've heard is think of it as a tempo play on turn four or five or something where you've dropped something and the ascendant. So you don't become arch enemy for no reason, but you still have this very hefty life linking body to stabilize. But it synergizes with so many things, right? It's a human. So like all human decks can play this thing. There are so many life gain commanders and synergies Mm -hmm. that this thing becomes insane in there. I think we just don't like it because it's boring and a bit cheaty. It, like, why are you playing this weird card cheating. that wasn't templated for Commander? Nah, you all <laughs> said it was overrated. It wasn't even good. That was before you kept said it on to it. it. I, kept, <laughs> I kept lying to it multiple like, times since then. It. So now, now it is won me over. <laughs> I don't remember anybody saying it wasn't good. I oh, think it was I like remember. It was, no, 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 no. Run it back. Run it back to the point where I know for a fact... That I, I even stated, I think it is overrated. It's no longer once where it needed to be banned in Commander. I never thought that does it not mean it's not good. Like, I would never go out of my way to buy a Sarah Ascendant to stick in a deck. Like, in, in that sense, like some people think it's the greatest thing ever, but if I had one sitting around, I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, why throw not? it in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I needed I, to fill really? a slot, but I'm so synergy heavy that I wouldn't consider it outside of a lifelink deck. Or a deck exactly. that's already running the ranger captains that can More easily bumps. get it. Good in Soul Sisters. No, wait, so so is that, not the same, deck. <laughs> is that not the same as like what a goblin engineer is though? No, I mean, I would, goblin I would put a goblin welder into. I, if oh, I had sorry, to fill welder. a slot that that didn't have good artifacts to to bring back, then I, I wouldn't even consider. No, 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 I'd no, put no. a M- mountain that, instead. I feel like it, it's very extremely synergistic and same uh, like in in the decks that it's going to go in. Sarah Ascendant. Yeah. It's not going to go in every deck. I don't think but it goes in every deck. It goes it's in also like insanely minutes. strong in its synergistic deck. So obviously Goblin Welder, you have to build around, and it has a very high ceiling. But Sarah Ascendant in a life gain deck, I'm not talking about like you need to gain life, but like every time you gain life, put that many plus one, plus one counters on something, right? Or draw a card or something. Like Sarah Ascendant is absolutely cracked in those decks, right? Well, like so, any white deck, you just you can just... Any that could literally just be like turn one what? to All right. I don't know five Yo, or something. You just drop. That. You drop Dude, a that's six, okay. six flying that's life a, that, But that's like that's still an average to good card in those cases, right? Yeah, and then you it's better than Goblin cases. Welder though. If I have like two talismans yeah. on the battlefield, no artifacts in my graveyard, I'm like, what am I doing with this card? Build around. Dude, yeah, you like build every, around it. Every every deck naturally has these artifacts. Like, mm. it, if, if okay, I pick on. Okay, Wait, do I'll you just, just jam this in every red deck? Then was that your? I no. think I do. No. You think not you could. do no. you though? <laughs> not in <laughs> theory, but do you? <laughs> I don't play mono red, except actually. And you know what? Wait, but you could put I this do, in multicolor I decks. I do. I I do play it in like my burn deck. Why? Because you can still bring back things like Ruby Medallion, uh, you know, Endless Atlas. You've still got Chandra's Regulator. You can bring back Ankh of Mishra's, Bastis Callers, That's all so these small. things. Interesting. I, I, mean, that, I only play this in, like, I actual do. artifact reanimator decks. Not, only do, not even, like, a generic artifact deck. I have to be, like, Ozgear or, like, Duretti yeah. or something that's, like, actively getting artifacts in and out of the graveyard. So maybe I we just view it a little bit differently. I have it in my Brutaclad deck. I love it, but I have it in no other decks. I mean, all red I, decks I mean, can reanimate because your your card draw engine or whatever is like big score or whatever, like this pitch loops. and draw. So you can normally reanimate, but you have to have something worth reanimating. Like, There's so many, though. Like between swords, commanders, plates, all of that. But as remember, well, you got to play the welder and untap with it, right? Like there, there's some sure. big requirement here. It's not like it's an ETB or, or whatever, right? So, but the that's what I mean. The explosive explosiveness of that straight up Taco Bell levels <laughs> of explosive. Yeah, yeah, it is. Explosive. It is. The ceiling super high. I definitely too. agree with that. The ceiling is off the charts. No, no well, doubt about it. You can't even get chat GPT to back you up here, Krim. It's a 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Y'all crazy. Goblin Welder for that. fought hard, but in the end, this cheaty Y'all one drop that wasn't for that. designed for the format will continue to trudge on. 
Uh, oh, next one is a matchup I'm sure Krim will love. Uh, Mother of Runes versus Spectral Sailor. So, <laughs> Mother of Runes. Uh, mom, probably. A single white. It's a 1-1. Human cleric. Tap. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And then Spectral Sailor is a blue one drop. 1-1. One, one, spirit pirate with flash flying. Four mana to draw a card. Seth. Easiest matchup in the first <laughs> round so far. Mother Runes is a legit bomb. That card is so good. It's been 25 years. Still nothing has done what Mother of Runes done better. We've seen many watered down Giver of Runes and Skrelv. Nothing does what Mom does. Mom is like an amazing way to protect your creatures. It comes down on turn one. It triggers all your creature cheap stuff card draw. You can tutor it up with the same stuff. They can find Sarah's and then all the Ranger Captor of Vito's type stuff. The card's good in any white creature deck. Spectral Sailor I might play in a deck that cares about its creature types, like pirates or spirits. I think it's like okay in those decks. It's nice to have the option to pay for draw a card. Although I will say, whenever I pay for to draw a card with like a land or a mana maroc, y'all make fun of me for paying for to draw a card. So it's not and even like should. that good of ability. So I, I don't even think this is in the same conversation. Like Mother of Runes by a huge landslide. Yeah. Tomer, I you've agree. agreed with Seth so far. Do you agree with this choice? Uh, I run so I run Spectral Sailor in Edric, and I also run it in my Malcolm deck, which is like pirates. So exact exact ways that Seth described it, but like I wouldn't jam it in other decks. You have to really be like I really care about the evasion part because that's the most useful part. If you have some way of lowering the activated ability cost to like one blue mana like there are cards that like lower activated abilities by generic like training grounds then it gets a little bit more tantalizing but like it's very much a build around whereas mother runes like if you have generic white deck and you need to fill a slot you could just throw in mother of runes and it'll be fine it'll be good oh the normies. <laughs> Hit us with the anime. Hit us with the anime Spectral Sailor crew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Richard, a man of culture, understands that Spectral Sailor is the only that has an anime art. Therefore, I vote for that. <laughs> Simple. Fair. If Mother of Runes had anime art, oh yeah, what Mother would you Runes. choose? Mother of Runes. <laughs> really? It's play only a matter of time. Play a, playability. Mother of Runes. Just better <laughs> card. Sure. Yeah. But sorry, dude. Uh, Mother Runes doesn't have an anime art. <laughs> Wait, wow. spe- what's the Spectral Sailor anime art? Am I going You've to see it? I'm going to die of cringe. Okay, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> Editor, honest. can you put up the Spectral Sailor it, it, it anime makes, art, please? Good, good. It's it's oh my <laughs> god, it is. Well, how's that? Oh, okay, it I get it. You no know what? Sense. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it has like translucent uh, legs, so I guess that's it's sexually. A <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't yeah, look dude. like a spirit. Dude, I know. It took it me looks- a while to like <laughs> look it up and down and be like, "All right, I guess it's kind of ghostly." I know. It, it looks squint. like a pirate. A, like this is like a, this is cool. The it, it, the anime title of this is clearly that why one isn't time it a schoolgirl uniform? And How's it turned a out to be a pirate job. This is not like, a pirate attire. If I, yeah, I, I played, is, I played the One Piece card game. I know how a pirate looks like. This is not. This, not okay, okay I'll, I'll be honest with you. The art, the art makes no sense. I, I don't. But I'm just. That's uh, just yeah, all mother, to me. mother of runes is just better. Wait, 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 wait. What, what is your actual choice here? Did you, did you mother change of it? runes? You're mother choosing mother runes. runes. Of course, I'm choosing Mother of Runes. Wow. Are you kidding me? Am I crazy? Okay, okay, guys. Yes. <laughs> Seth said this was the easiest matchup yeah. ever. So far, yeah. So Do yeah. you play Mother of Runes in your white decks? Yes. I'm thinking of cutting it from my yes. humans deck. Like, really? What? It, it's an onboard trick. So everyone sees it, right? So no one's going to get like blown out by Mother of Runes. They're like, okay, we kill the Mother of Runes first by like doing something and then make them use it and then you do the other thing. Mm hmm. It doesn't save you from sweepers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's not like do you play it? Like I never, I, guess, I never play. Like I would just play <laughs> the the white like uh, gods, gods willing. I think or like Tamio safekeeping, like those kind of effects, rather than play the mom. So I never put mom in any deck, and I'm actually 
gonna cut mom from my humans deck. So like, where do I even play this anymore? Whereas I've actually contemplated playing Spectral Sailor in a random <laughs> non-sailor, non-pirate deck. So yeah, and it's bir- a is bird actually deck. like a bird Ramirez, deck. Malcolm, Admiral Beckett Brass. Those are like its normal homes where you play yeah. it. But okay. as a one-one flash, I can just draw cards. You know, when when you leave up mana, I <laughs> no. think my actually well, has a mana for to draw cards. Okay, not with a this. good. Yeah, but not when I do you, my mana no, rocks. No. You hold up your interaction or whatever, and no one does anything. You flash in, you draw a card, and you pass. That's the right? saddest turn ever. Even my, it, that's uh, not a win in my book. That's that's the this, consolation prize that like you get at like a Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> where you don't have enough tickets to get anything you want, so you get like a. You get an eraser, you know? And it's not even a good eraser. Like, like, I, that's, I don't play that's, that's runes. That's like, I, I never find a reason to put it in my deck. It's probably bad in Richard decks, honestly, because what are you protecting? You're playing all spirited companions, and so oh, like, you have nothing yeah. that's worth yeah. killing boots? anyway, so what's the point? When you just play boots? <laughs> like, I guess you can save yourself from a blasphemous act, right? But, it, but like, don't you just play boots? It like, triggers your whatever, welcoming vampire, any mentor of the meek, any of those yes. effects. It, it protects does. your things, it wears equipment, it flips it down, it's a one drop that flips your dowsing dagger, like, it's it's all of those little synergistic things, I think, that make it worth it. Wow. That's also Richard <laughs> it doesn't matter if if the opponents know that if there's an onboard trick, they still have to work around it, right? Yeah. Which means, and then and if you untap with it, you're now plus mana because you're not having to spend any like mana to protect something. That's one. That's one free one, right? You get a free one. That's huge. Or you either that or you they don't do the removal spell. They have to sit there and hold it until they eventually find the sweeper. I mean, and because I, I know a lot you, of people play an don't irresponsible you just put maneuver in your deck and call it a day, like so, no, you cutting cards to stick this in, like <laughs> because like, this so, is an additional layer, right? Like yes. it's free, it's free. It is, it's flawless. Maneuver okay, I, I need can, to know. Give me, give me the relative ranking here. Like boots, a single target spell like blossoming defense, a like entire board spell like flawless maneuver, or like a creature like mom or giver runes or you know one of those type of cards like. Do you actually have a ranking for these? Do we put them all in our deck to have multiple layers, or do you just choose one? Single I, target I is at layers. the very bottom, I think, for yeah. me. Like those blossoming defense is the one I play the yeah. least by far out of yeah. out of that list. Uh, saving your whole board, I play some of those effects. I think that boots those and lightning greaves are like they serve different roles, right? Like, I want Boots and Lightning Greaves in a deck where I'm looking to protect, like, a big thing, my Voltron commander or whatever, and in a deck like that, I'm probably not triggering Welcoming Vampires and trying to, like, put an equipment on my one-drop and, like, do sword shenanigans. So I think they just, like, serve different purposes. In the decks where Mother of Runes is good, I think it's better than Boots. But there's also decks where Boots is way better than Mother of Runes. I think none of these cards for me, spoiler alert, are auto includes. They're all synergy based. And I think I think Krim and I totally agree with Krim and, and Seth on it. It's like based on synergy, like Lightning Greaves, if I want haste or I care about equipments or artifacts, then it gets better. But if I care about creatures, like with Welcoming Vampire, or if I'm running Ranger Captain of the Eos and I have a little Eos package, uh, then Mother of Runes gets a lot better too. And it also gives pseudo evasion too. Like, if a person only yes. has blockers that are blue, one color, you can actually get around uh, their blockers as well if you need to. Um, so it's versatile. I don't run it in every deck, but, like, if I'm in a human deck, if I'm in a creature-heavy deck, if I'm in a Ranger of Eos deck, uh, I definitely run this. It, it acts as an invincible blocker, too, right? You block. Mm-hmm. It, it yes, can target it's an itself, invincible yeah. blocker. Yeah. It, it can get around target removal. It's very annoying. It's a lot of value for one. Whereas Spectral Sailor, if you're ever paying four mana for it, it just feels bad. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, anime sp- Spectral Sailor down. Not even Krim could save it. <laughs> Not even Krim could save it. He actually uh, no, no. did the anime no. betrayal there. Didn't even vote yeah. Spectral Sailor. <laughs> he did get the anime art on our podcast, though, so I think it was still a win for yeah. uh, for Krim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Oh. This is a matchup. We got Ragavan, Upset alert. Nimble Upset alert. Pilferer, and Spore Frog. Uh, so, Ragavan, uh, Terror of Modern, I guess. A single red drop. It's a legendary creature, Monkey Pirate. It's a 2 1. When it deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. You can dash it for 2, which means it comes into play with haste and you return it back to 
uh, its owner's hand at the at the end step. And then a spore frog, a one mana one one in green. It's a frog. You sacrifice it, prevent all combat damage that would be that would be dealt this turn. Now remember that this is EDH rec rank based. <laughs> That means there is a lot of spore frog believers in the world. And I had to double check this because, like, did we make the fog meta? <laughs> spore frog no. is used in decks that recur very aggressively out of the graveyard. Yes. Uh, so decks like Marin of Clan Neltoth, Muldrotha, uh, Cardor, mm-hmm. those kind of decks, you just bring it back every turn and just keep fogging. Um, but and so those Seth, are some of the most popular commanders in the format so i think that's yes. why spore frog shows up so high. Oh, and then monkey is a commander card or a 99 card as well right yeah so i mean so, i this, mean this matchup's actually really simple ragavan needs to deal combat damage to trigger and steal cards and uh make a treasure <laughs> spore frog stops combat damage so i think it's pretty clear that spore frog <laughs> beats ragavan if you uh, actually think spore about how the cards were straight up trades with ragavan in combat it does also <laughs> <trade>. <laughs> I know Spore Frog's an onboard fog, which is less valuable than a surprise fog, but you already mentioned it. It's also a recurable fog, and we've actually had some Commander Clash games where Spore Frog shows up, and it, like, coming back from the graveyard every turn is hugely impactful to how the game plays out. Ragavan can snowball very hard in the early game if it's your commander, if you happen to uh, to draw it early. But in the late game, it's kind of easy to get stonewalled and doesn't really do that much, where Spore Frog is going to really shine in the late game even more than the early game. So I'm a, I'm a Spore Frog believer here. I'm going for the upset. A Yo. pure pure Ragavan believer here. I can't so like so we we say okay, Spore Frog is way better because you can easily recur it repeatedly. But then we say Ragavan is bad because it can easily be chump blocked, and we just like ignore the fact that there's like a dozen ways of giving Ragavan evasion so it could get around blockers. Why is it so much easier for us to say, oh, we can recur Spore Frog every single turn, but we can't just like give Ragavan a commander's plates or just like flying or unblockable like a thousand different ways it's ragavan it makes it's easy like if you just give it any sort of evasion every single turn it's generating a mana a treasure every single turn and it's generating card advantage sometimes you're not always going to be playing the card sometimes you hit a land or whatever but like imagine a one drop that generates a treasure every single turn that's already quite good i think this commander is a no-brainer ragavan flying unblockable Spore Frog still stops it. Doesn't care. Okay, yeah. uh, you, you stonewalled my Ragavan for a single turn with your Spore Frog. The next turn I attack you again. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, fair. <laughs> Krim, I... it's, a, it's a 1-1 tie. Come are on, are you a monkey believer? <laughs> you can't okay. vote for the monkey. Are you going to go vote for Fog? Oh. This well, okay, but it's different. Though. It's not the spore frog is not a like a garbage fog. It's better Dang. than that. Be- oh my god, the <laughs> fog meta is getting there. Yes. Only on Commander Clash. Yes. Yo, but like also Ragavan is Ragavan. But mm-hmm. it is true. Like outside of like a Voltron deck, oftentimes Ragavan just gets stonewalled, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I. Unless, outside, yeah, of a, outside of a reanimator deck, how many times are you reanimating Spore Frog? <laughs> I don't. What's going on? There's also Get Rog Monster. Um, yeah. The other wow, reanimator. you could be you know, the Frog deck. No, mm-hmm, like an equipment mm-hmm. deck. You slap okay, on okay, equipment okay, for protection. So I, I vote Spore Frog. You're all because. Wow. Yes, you could suit up anything to be invincible. But if I were to be, if I was going to suit up anything to deal massive damage. I mean, it would not be a Ragavan. It would be a Rogak. It will be like literally any other commander. Like this thing just makes a single treasure and a card that I probably can't use because I'm playing this very narrow deck, right? I but the treasure helps you cast the card. That's the whole point. But, of the but you don't want to cast people's <laughs> random cards off their deck, right? You want to play your cards, right? So like you once in a while, you hit something then. good. <laughs> it's it's okay. I think you're. I don't see a single one of you running Spore Frog. Well, I guess you I, you I don't run Ragavan. Ragavan. I, I would never run Ragavan oh in generic God. red deck. It's, look, I, I think, think so... it's it's memory from modern. I'm sure all modern players will be like, "Is Ragavan really that bad?" No, no, we, really? We're gonna have 50 uh, comments right now. Maybe they're gonna be deleted when I say it. Saying like, obviously, it's so much better in CDH. Blah blah. blah but we're talking about casual commander. Uh, but 
Even so, I think people don't play monkey in CDH because then you're playing mono red and you're playing you a play monkey in CDH. I think it's really? a little bit worse. Yeah. If, like, well, I guess there's only a one bow master. Yeah, yeah, you still play in CDH. Like, I, I've tried. It's actually shockingly hard to hit with the monkey without giving yeah. it like extra stuff. Yeah, maybe right? you need to hit more than one. CDH. It's not like dagger where you get one hit it and you're good to go. Right? You need to hit like every turn with it for it to do something useful. Right? Hitting once yeah. is not good enough, and I think this the is... board gets gummed up quite quickly. I think there's more ways to give a Ragavan evasion to hit people consistently in your average deck than there is to loop Spore Frog in your average deck. That's all I'm saying. But, and if it's like a one shot Spore Frog, wait, I never, good. I never chose my. Oh, my you haven't chosen? Oh, all right, is, yeah, we, oh, we just. Oh, oh, oh. I was in the tank, so like, you're in the tank. Right. Yeah, because I, can, I really you can throw it a chat GPT please, right here. Please, <laughs> please, it's currently two I, one. I really don't know because these are both like, I mean. Okay, Ragavan as a commander, if you take over the early game. You played Monkey ass- this season on Clash. I did. Right? Curious I did. George. Or, yeah, I was that was I, I think one you of them, actually won that game too. You dominated with mm-hmm. that deck. Yeah, like and then there was that one game where I think I killed Seth on turn four because or whatever turn five because I had the modern start. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> your commander, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. It was like it wasn't commander. your commander. But so, yeah, like, if it's your commander, it runs wild, right? I I think I might, yeah, no, like, I think I might go Raghavan. I think I stay Raghavan. Like, they're, they're both very good to me. Like, they're both very good to me. Uh, but I, I think I go Raghavan. We're going to have to throw a chat. I actually don't know where chat GPT is going to go. Yeah, I don't one. either. We're, it's going to be gonna... like modern staple Raghavan. <laughs> ChatGPT is getting very uh, non-committal here. <laughs> Hold on, it's learned over because time. there's too it many, the there's too many comments. angry commander players out there yelling at ChatGPT. <laughs> so that's like couch it's thing. I'm like, <laughs> play what you like. They're all great monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's learning how to be a Twitter PR person. Oh, oh. Okay. So funny enough, so at first I asked, like, what's better between Ragavan and Spore Frog in Commander? And Thank then it you. gave me some non-committal answer, right? It's always like, depending on your deck strategy and if, you know. <laughs> and then I asked, like, what's the better card without um, format context? It still gives me a Commander answer, uh, but actually commits to one. So let me, let me, let me uh, drop some truths for you from ChatGPT here. In after. Commander. Spore Frog is generally the more universally useful card between the two options. What? Are you not yes. shocked by that? I'm actually kind of yes. shocked that it shows. ChatGPT knows about the fog meta. It knows. It's learning from it's it's, it's it's looks into future. the future and it knows. <laughs> it it knows. just knows. I need I to know. see that prompt again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you're the only one feeding it prompts. Or you're like, yeah. I like fogs. <laughs> I like birds. I like spirit companions. Like if you wrote spirit companion versus like I don't know birds of paradise, it'd be like spirit companion. Nine times out of ten, this is the or part. is Richard from the future? <laughs> and I've sp- seen the Spore Frog sure. meta, and I bring it back for you guys. Sure. Okay, uh, this one is a is an interesting matchup. Our, our number two seed is Esper Sentinel versus number fifteen seed Slitherblade. Uh, so Esper Sentinel, one drop. It's an artifact creature, human soldier. It's a one one. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card and lost that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. Slitherblade is a one-man of one-two in blue. It's a Naga Rogue. It can't be blocked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good uh, flipping it Slitherblade is actually dagger, used in a lot of decks. Uh, rogues. <laughs> rogues is a very common one. It's actually a rogue. And yep. it ca- decks that care about unblockables, so like ninjas, uh, Edric decks, uh, Rego Streetwise Mentor, like stuff like that. It's actually shockingly high play rate. So, so you got Slitherblade, which is a good option in decks that care about those things you just said. If you really care about unblockable creatures, because you're drawing with Edric, if you really care about rogues, if you're trying to ninjutsu, it's really, really good. Esper Sentinel is just one of the best cards in Commander, 
period, that you can play in literally any deck, and it's going to make your deck better. Uh, so I think there's really not any comparison here. I guess Slitherblade doesn't die to Orcish Bowmasters, so, which is something, but still... <laughs> Uh, this is the the classic like two f- verse fifteen. You get the like little underdog school that like snuck in somehow to the tournament, and then they just get stomped by like Kentucky or someone. Like that's that's how this goes. And Esper Sentinel's doing the stomping here, so easy Esper Sentinel. <laughs> is this Wait. a Disney comeback? <laughs> I, I agree, but how does Slitherblade not die to Orcish Bowmaster? It's a one two, right? It's a one right? two. It's a one, two. one one. Yeah, you would need oh, two it's kings. a one two. I thought it was a, a one yes. one. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's a delighted halfling. Oh, busted! <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, no, it's Esper Sentinel for sure. But like, obviously, if I was on a deck that cares about the things that Seth described, and Slither Blade's better. But just like Esper Sentinel is just generically strong. You don't have to build around it. But if you do build around it, if you increase its power, it's even better. But even stronger. A very good card. The normies have spoken. Okay. <laughs> Wait a because... minute. There's no anime Slither Blade. Yeah, no, no, there is. There? <laughs> I'm not no. no, no, no. There, <laughs> no it's, it's suddenly it's like a random waifu, and you're not like, how is this a Naga? I don't get it. <laughs> Off the top rope, it's actually going to be Slither Blade, but okay. I think that people are like, yeah, probably Esper Sentinel will win this round because so many people overrate and overvalue Esper Sentinel. <laughs> But that and and I've said this before, and I continue to stand by it. Ristic stud, Ristic buddy, only good in a few select decks. I'm not jamming it in every deck. And I like Slitherblade probably goes in about as many decks as Esper Sentinel would for me. So I actually think it's relatively close, uh, and they're about the same power level. So. <laughs> it could go in either direction. This I is how you guys like must feel every time I open my mouth. <laughs> this, 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 I get it. Draw like eight it's cards. So the same power level. They <laughs> are. They are. I'm looking. I laugh it up. I know. I know. But so like, in 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 an Azorius, I need to connect unblockable deck. <laughs> Esper Sentinel still jumps to the way. <laughs> so oh, even in its niche, if they were <laughs> somehow the same color, Esper Sentinel, I think, is way better. So I don't know what Krim is... I could, I could see the anime art argument or something, right? I could see the price argument. Slither Blade is free. Esper Sentinel is a lot of money. Free. But if you ignore okay. that, you're not Ignoring- even close. Ristic Buddy is overrated outside of Saffron right, Krim, my last Olive argument for you. the pod. It goes it's- into artifact decks, and it's an artifact. <laughs> artifacts yeah. are broken. That Artifacts yeah. are broken. It is yeah. an artifact. But it everything is, an artifact. is broken. But Therefore. literally, yo, uh, <laughs> is this Dark like the Steel Sponge Citadel Bobby where he's holding broken. up like the wallet, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> artifacts Look. are broken. I agree. So as yeah. Sentinel is, is broken, it's like, no, so they're playing. Negative 13, Richard had it right. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't choose. All right, well, whatever. Wait, 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 wait. Are you not voting? Wait, 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 wait. I, like you you like Esper Esper Sentinel. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I, I think that, yeah, like, like Esper Sentinel narrowly beats it out. Oh, okay. It's not a <laughs> clean sweep. <laughs> narrowly beats yeah. It's that yeah. mean. Did we come back? No, clean sweep. <laughs> okay. First sweep but of like, the evening. We saw Richard draw like 10 cards off it. Now, granted, Seth was in that it, game. It but... was because of Seth. I, did you but read you the comments? Use... Did you read the comments of the episode where people were like, I watch a lot of Commander gameplay, and how Seth plays against Esper Sentinel is how like everyone plays. No one actually like doesn't execute their game plan to pay the one. So I think y'all live in a fantasy world, and I actually play no. the way most people play Commander. I... I, Maybe that, every that is, single game no. is just like this weird, bizarre <laughs> world. Then for me, for like the cons and stuff, but yeah, even <laughs> even it like I remember he like dropped the turn one, and then I had like a signet on turn two, and I had to play it on turn three instead. Like that's still a win, I think. Even Richard and I's pod, I didn't draw a single card off my Esper Sentinel in my humans deck until like yeah. turn nine. Nobody but it was drew a still card good because like, it it triggered your human synergies. I mean, if yeah, that yeah, happened, sure. yeah, and then you make your opponents like playoff curve the entire game for one mana which is kind of like ridiculous like if your opponent doesn't play their mana rock on turn two isn't that already a win like you would already got him essentially if that's what happens uh all right eh. well <laughs> this was the longest 4-0 sweep discussion we've had <laughs> it wasn't even and close no politically it, too it's like, overrated <laughs> remember Sorry, you want to feed richard cards at some yes. point because i was the arch enemy and you were like so i always just won't pay the one because i want to give richard cards like you can use yeah. it that way uh okay next round 
Or Changeling Outcast. What happened with all these Weathered words? Wayfarer. <laughs> so Changeling Outcast is <laughs> a one drop in black. Uh, it's a one one <laughs> shapeshifter with Changeling, which means it's every creature type. Uh, simultaneously, it let can't... me check the waifu art on this one. Yo, it can't yo. block and can't be blocked, so it cannot block and then cannot uh, can't be blocked. And then weathered wayfarer, a single white man, a one one human nomad cleric, tap it and a single white mana. Uh, search your library for a land card, reveal it, put in your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if an opponent controls more lands than you. Yo, my bad. I think I spiked the rating of all these, like, low-to-the-ground unblockable cards, because I must have, like, 50 blue-black unblockable decks on EDH rack. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, mean, I'm looking yeah, at the so list, of, like, Ginger Root going up, like, what's going on? So Changing Outcast goes in every deck that Slitherblade cares about, but yes. it's also oh, the miser, above. like, every creature type, yeah. uh, which actually comes up quite often, right? So It's a, it's a dragon Eureka one-drop, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Or party decks, or things like party that. Party decks. Yeah. Um, Scare Codex. There, there's like there's a bunch of Any, anything that tribes that like, like for example. Type. Oh, what is that? Let me see. Uh oh, so Roga is like a kobold deck, right? It's a very powerful ability. It gives your kobolds plus two plus two. There's not enough kobolds, like period, to fill that deck, right? So people put changelings in. <sighs> Same with orcs and gore bag. Mm -hmm. Uh that cares about like orcs and, and goblins, but is a black card. So, like, changing outcast goes into those decks, too. In addition to all the unblockable stuff we talked about with Slitherblade. So, that's so cheaty. I, I can't vote for a changeling, because if you're playing this as your kobold or whatever, I'm going to make fun of you. Like, no, like, that, that's not real. There's we not saw enough that. We have kobolds. Learned, oh, well, that's tough. Don't build kobolds then. Wait till they print more of them. You can't just play changeling outcast and be like, oh, it's a kobold. That's so. It enables uh, decks the that flavor, are not even possible. The flavor. <laughs> Seriously, well, I didn't though, know Seth is calling me out so hard for my changeling deck. <laughs> well, if you're building an actual changeling <laughs> deck, that's one thing. But, like, if you're playing, I don't know, a dragon deck and drop a bunch of changeling, that's like, uh, I don't know. I like Weathered we Wayfair, that. though. I think Weathered Wayfair is, like, legitimately underrated. It gets any land. Any land. And it works with all the catch-up ramp stuff. So if you're building your white deck in a way to support catch-up ramp anyway, you should be able to turn this on with bounce lands. And this can be getting your Thespian Stage, your Vesuva, your Strip Mine... Name a busted utility land. This is going to find it maybe even every single turn for a single mana. So I think Weathered Wayfair is actually kind of a little underrated in 2023. And I can't bring myself to vote for a changeling because it's just so cheaty. So I'm I'm going Weathered Wayfair. I think this is a, cl a lot closer one because I think Changeling Outcast is literally the best of the one mana evasion creatures. Um, like better than Silverblade, obviously. Um, so any deck that block. wants this effect is going to run it. I don't think you're going to be just running it as like a random change. Like you really want to have you really want to have unblockable creatures. You're not just going to be jumping jamming it because you need another like I don't know bird. I don't know in your deck. <laughs> uh, but Weather Wayfarer, I do actually agree is like a a powerhouse in commander. Um it helps. So if you are doing the catch up ramp thing in white, which is a like a staple of white decks, if you activate it one time, and you're worried about ramping with your like Knight of the White Orchid or your uh, Cartographer's Hawk, you can just fetch up another bounce land, like your Gilda's yeah. Commons or something, to Lotus keep field. the catch up ramp stuff. Yeah, like Lotus Field going. But it's so much better than that. Like if you're afraid somebody's going to steal your creatures, you just get any utility land. You get your Homeward Path. You get every single utility land is now at available to you you're going to be hitting all your land drops for the rest of the game and getting the best one every single turn just for one white mana on a one drop it's really good and it works with all the creature synergies again it's a one white drop thingy so ranger of eosis can grab it too that's why i really like like mother of runes and sarah send because you put a little package together you know and it's just really good it's so much it's so good i love it it's, it's a little boy it's my little boy what do you all have against good unblockable <laughs> threats? Like you all just don't value them, like at all. I'm learning that you all just don't you value, don't value them ramp at all. or tutoring. <laughs> I, I guess okay. Whether way fire gets about? Get I hate green opposition because Wait, I you all you all hate birds true. of paradise. So apparently, all just don't value ramp. <laughs> I do. That's why I hate green. But I but I value real ramp, not birds. Right. So I I I think that okay. Not, okay, so the play getting beaten by Esper Sentinel, sure, whatever, maybe, barely. But Changeling Outcast? Come on. Come on. 
come on. Changeling Outcast is so much better than a Weathered Wayfarer. Again, because the decks that th- this is going, like, sure, maybe Weathered Wayfarer pulls you a land or two or something like that. But the point here is Changeling Outcast, again, the ceiling of the, the floor of this is not even low. Like, the ceiling of this card in every deck that it's going in is absurd. It's absurd. There's usually some busted interaction with it or something like, like, Tomer's Ur Dragon deck, right? Or, or to, like, any, anything that just cares about any type. In my Rogue deck, my Anawan there. deck. Sure it is. Uh, and then on top of that, like, it, it, it could do whatever you need to. It, there's so many on-combat triggers. It swings with daggers. It swings with swords. It connects. It, it's just so efficient. And it goes in every type that can run it. It's not... It can't even block, though. It like, can't it can't block. block. Well, who it's cares like, about blocking? It's, it's the what unblockability, is right? Because there's actually three Changeling one-drops. The other two are Moth Dust Changeling and Universal Automaton. Mm-hmm. They're not nearly as played as Changeling Outcasts. Like, they're not even close. So the unblockability is what's putting it into the, esh- you know, the upper echelons of EDH rec. But... Weathered well, so Wayfarer is one of the so most good. popular commanders in the format. <laughs> it's, it's like it's in like the top ten. So, and this is literally the best one drop for Yuriko. Like, if if Yuriko could play <laughs> Weathered Wayfarer, I'd be jamming that. <laughs> right? Because you, you get anything. It, like, tutors any land, and lands are so versatile. And, like, yeah. it's also just card draw, right? Like, if you just ignore, if I'm just fetching basics, that's not very exciting, is it? Or is it? I don't know. I'm drawing a card every turn. Lance is the in my hand, one drop. Right? I would beat all of these, by the way. Yeah, like, I don't, wait, I don't know about that, Tomer. Because Lan- Lantax only gets basics. See, like, hey. Weathered Wayfarer, the, the key for white is it allows you to keep your catch-up ramp going. Yep. Right, because you can normally catch up ramp like once, but if you didn't draw like Lotus Field, it's hard to do it multiple times. Uh, Weather Wayfarer lets you fetch it up and keep going forever, right? And then it also fetches up whatever you need. It could be a Maze of Ith, it could be a Field of the Dead, it could be a Plains if that's all you needed, right? Uh, but yeah, well, so Krim, let me confirm because last time you pulled the switch, you <laughs> you're going Changeling Outcast, right? I did, yeah, no, like the, the last time I was just saying Esper Sentinel was not that good. Weather way fair it is, Chris. <laughs> Un- <thing. laughs> sure. Poor yeah. unblockable creatures. So not doing well. <laughs> so okay, okay. Uh, next matchup. <laughs> Three versus 14. Viscerous Seer <laughs> versus Ginger Brute. There's a lot of unblockable creatures in this, yeah, uh, I, in this top list Not here. for long. <laughs> so yeah, this no. here is a one drop, one one. It's a vampire wizard in black. Sacrifice a creature. Scry one synonymous with any kind of sacrifice decks, right? One of the best sack outlets. Ginger Brute is a one mana, one, one artifact creature, food golem haste for one mana. Uh, it can't be blocked except, uh, except my creatures with haste and then two mana tap sack it gain three life. So Ginger Brute unblockable, but also a haster and an artifact and a food. So it actually goes in a ton of decks because there's a lot of commanders that want you to hit with haste creatures or uh, trigger based on artifacts entering the battlefield or uh, with Lord of the Rings, a lot of food decks. So is Ginger Brute the best sliver blade <laughs> slash changeling outcast? <laughs> so, no, so I you think have to pay one Ginger Brute's actually it. the worst of the three for most decks. Like uh, like everything, their context matters. Like, yes, if you're an artifact deck or a food deck, then you get upside out of Ginger Brute. But as far as just like, I'm trying to ninjutsu, I'm trying to trigger my Edric. I think it's the worst of the bunch, honestly, because you do have to pay a mana, and it doesn't even get unblockable. Some opponents will actually have haste creatures, and then it's still not unblockable. Viserys here, on the other hand, is just the best creature sack outlet, right? Not only does it only cost one mana, so it's easy to play it along with another combo piece in the turn. Being one mana op- opens up tutor possibilities we've talked about before, but scrying when you sack is a really powerful way to like dig through your deck to find a missing piece, so... I think that Viserys here is is just like if I couldn't vote for Changeling Outcast and Slither Blade, I think Ginger Brute's just a worse version of those cards. So I think it's got to be Viserys here. I think Ginger Brute's probably just a better card mid to late game when you absolutely do not want to draw these cards anymore because it has haste. So that's that's nice. It's but true. Like, yeah, Viserys here, like sacrifice decks are are like the thing about black. So if you're in any black based deck. 
chances are any combination of black, you're probably going to have like a sacrifice something. There are obvious exceptions, but that's like the primary thing that black does. So Viserys here is a staple in that archetype, and it's one of the most popular archetypes in the entire format. So yeah, I would put that up higher. I mean, yeah, it's Viserys here. It's Viserys here. I, I, it's, not it's, <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even close. It is such a centerpiece of like any black based like sack deck. And again, I've talked about it. Like the, it's its potential is absurd. It makes everything at least a scry. Even the garbage cards you don't care about, and that alone is so much better than what Ginger Brute brings. It's it's good value. Like someone rats, just like all right, whatever. I'll just sack my whole board and scry a whole bunch. Right? You don't even yeah. need to be comboing for it to get value. Yeah, I think Ginger Brute is underrated. I mean, it's nowhere close to Viscerous here, right? But the haste is relevant, right? Because you can like slap your commander down, haste the Ginger Brute in, and get value immediately, which is something it has over all these other unblockables, like the ability to come off the top. Like, you could imagine a Voltron deck coming in with a hasty creature, slapping everything together and killing someone. You can imagine playing Winota and Ginger Brute on an empty board and triggering Winota immediately. Like, there's a lot of... Wait, does that work with Winota's humans or non-humans? I mean, mixing my cards. Yeah, yeah. no, no, you're with, right. It, it yeah. works with yeah. Winota, yeah. Yeah, or you, like, Ginger Brute, Eureka, whatever, right? Like, the, the haste is kind of important, so... But, you know, Viscera Seer is, like, the card, right? If you're a sack deck, like, you want Viscera Seer? Carry on feeder is another one drop sack outlet that's on this list somewhere, but it's much further down because it's a one one that can't block and you just get plus one plus one counters. The scry lets you dig for the combo and you know set up your draws to do uh, what your deck needs to do. So, uh, easy, easy clap. Four O, we actually got a four O that never happened. That's the second four O. Just oh, yeah. yeah, we don't we joke. Sentinel. If we your only two, thing is uh, unblockable, don't come to this bracket. Yeah. That we've heard <laughs> uh-huh. uh, it's enough to get you into the postseason, but not enough to get you past win. the first round. Uh, Soul Warden versus Grave Uncultured, <laughs> uncultured, single white mana, one one human cleric. Whenever another creature comes into play, you gain one life. Grave Crawler is a black one drop. It's a 2 1 zombie. It cannot block. You may cast Grave Crawler from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. This one's I mean, hard for me. Go ahead, Grim. What, this, what do you got? I find is it this hard. hard. It's, it's Grave Crawler. What? It's Grave Crawler. 100%. What? Grave Crawler Reason is so. so being. Okay. Grave Crawler doesn't even have to be in a zombie deck to go off. It com- it's always right. a part of a combo. I know yeah. that you, you, okay, yes, you need a zombie to get it back, but like, think about it. Like changing, the, like, outcast. <laughs> changing Outcast. Changing <laughs> Outcast, Feel of the Dead. There's so many ways for you to get others, like zombies on board that I just, I've seen just black based decks that are sack decks have ways to bring this card back. It's not hard. And it's always thrown in there with Ashenod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar. This is. The big staple, right? Like for a, a sack deck, usually, and it's always a part of a combo. I, I, so, don't, I don't know. I've never seen Grave Crawl outside of a zombie deck, personally. What? what? Well, like, no, like, I mean, I've seen people just mute a vault Grave Crawler yeah. combo use. I don't mm. know. Like, people actually do that. Like, it's yeah, just a like one mana recurrable combo piece that's easy to set up. So the combo's the reason to vote for Gravecrawler. Like, as far as being in a zombie deck, whatever, like, it does, it's not even that great in a zombie deck unless you're comboing with it. Like, it's kind of, it can't block. Yeah. It's only a Savannah Lions. So that's the biggest reason to vote for Gravecrawler. The one thing that, like, has me on the fence is Phil has taught me the power of Soul Warden. We've had some Commander Clash games where Phil just, like, drops a turn when Soul Warden, and it doesn't look threatening enough to kill. And then next thing you know, like, five turns later, we're all like, why is Phil at 60 life and the rest of us are at 30? And it's just like, the Soul Warden just sits out and everyone plays their game and it's gained like 20 life for one mana and it like has all the other one drop synergies of tutorable and, you know, white card, all that stuff triggers your things. So I actually think this is way closer than it looks. I think it, for me, this is like consistency versus explosiveness. <sighs> I think Soul Warden's underrated, what, but I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go with the combo, I guess, and Krim I'm, with the I'm the slam upside. dunking Soul Warden here. Okay, so so I personally have never seen anybody run Grave Crawler outside of zombie decks. Maybe you guys have, and then they they do specifically this combo deck. But I was looking at EDH Rec just to see the numbers, and I saw there were 42k zombie decks. It's what it's the second most popular 
uh, creature type in, according to Idiot Trick. The highest is dragon. So it goes dragons, then zombies. That's how popular uh, zombies are. However, then I looked at life gain, and it was, what was it, 92,000? Uh, 94,000. It's more than double. The people really like life gain. It's actually one of the most popular archetypes in the entire format. People love life gain. And I would say Soul Warden is, is one of the best cards in that archetype because that it constantly triggers, as, as Seth said. And then if I was just jamming it into a random deck, I would definitely be running just a random Soul Warden. Like, yeah, I'm not super happy about it, but like it's much better than ran- jamming a, a random grave card because if you literally don't have a zombie to, to pair with it, it, doesn't, it does literally nothing. Um, whereas Soul Warden, you just jam it down, and it's going to gain you like 20 life just effortlessly. And the way it constantly triggers makes it like insanely good in life gain decks, which is just a, more than double the popularity of zombies. Let, let me see if I can win you over, Tomer, because here's here's the my best argument for voting for Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler does something that no other card can do in the combos. There There's nothing is. else that, that does what Gravecrawler does. But if you're playing a life gain deck... There's Essence Warden and Soul Attendant and Suitor Priest and LSO. There's like a lot of almost Soul Wardens. The Soul Warden is the best of them, but there's like, if you want to play the next best one, you have like 20 other options that are one or two mana to choose from. For me, that's the biggest reason I got to go Gravecrawler is like Soul Warden's more replaceable. When uh, Gravecrawler, you can't just put in another card that's going to do what it does. Counteroffer. Exactly. Counteroffer. Okay. If I said, if you said, hey, Ristic Study is the best blue card in Commander. And I said, well, just so you know, there's Ristic Study, and then there's Ristic Study, and they literally just printed Ristic Study three times and just changed the name. We're like, oh, well, I guess they're a little bit worse because they're replaceable. You could just replace Ristic Study with Ristic uh, Hangover. And, you know, it's the exact same card, but it has a different name. Like, no, it's still the best card. I don't care if it has multiple copies. I'd still run it. I run all of them. Like, Lily, if you're in a life gain deck, what are your best cards? It's Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, and the, the other one. I don't know what the other one's called. I don't but care if there's multiple copies. So, regardless, I feel like even if you, if you see a Gravecrawler, you're definitely, like, worried about it. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I think Soul in Warden, a generic deck, I don't, like, I don't think Gravecrawler... Like, I, if you're in a zombie deck, I see it, and it's the best zombie card by far. But, like, Soul Warden is insanely good. And it's also insanely good in life game decks. Like, if you're playing a life game deck and you drop down a Soul Warden, I'm actually scared. Because you're going to get, like, insane triggers off it. So, Tomer's been talking about this mythical Ranger of Eos package, right? And, like, (laughs) it tutors up one drops. And I have a deck with all of these white one drops that that we've talked about so far. And almost every time, Soul Warden... Soul Warden... got it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey i'm not the only one that got that emergency okay. alert <laughs> what so, so soul warden is the card that i actually pull up the most in baragon humans i'm not a life gain deck right it's just an easy way to stabilize i've had games where i gain just 50 60 life for like no good reason and it, like it keeps giving right like i like a marriott back you know I, I horn of gondor gain a billion life i attack with adeline gain a billion life like it has so much value that by turn four if i'm tutoring a one drop it's usually soul warden which is weird because when i built the deck i never thought that you know that's what i'd be doing right like usually the go-to is esper sentinel soul warden if i have nothing better to do um but soul warden i think has so much value in random decks i think we can all use incremental life gain it just once you gain like 10 20 life people just give up on you you know they're like ah, well, whatever he's gonna gain so much life there's like no point in attacking him and like that's like the super most defensive card ever for one mana and you don't have to work for it so i give it to soul warden and that's when they swinging their commander at you be like commander sure but time. like then <laughs> very specific decks yeah. can deal with you now right like the, yeah. the average deck may not be able to do it right that puts ah. it as a, two, two. an impasse that puts us as an, an impasse on, we got to throw it back I, to uh <laughs> chat gpt or unless someone wants to do a last minute I'm, change no i'm nervous about no. this one though usually chat gpt agrees with me but this time i i'm afraid that i'm gonna lose this one i that feel like it's gonna well, go so hard and... always antagonizes me except for last time i guess <laughs> i don't know let's see if I had to choose one card between Gravecrawler and Soul Warden for a generic commander deck without specific information about the deck's theme or strategy, 
I would recommend Soul Warden. There yeah. you have it. Man. Soul Warden. Yeah, that's what I figured. T- Tomer, I disbelieve. Betrayed by the AI. He's an AI believer all of a sudden. No, I'm just like, I'm disappointed every single time I hear it. So you want to be wrong. (laughs) No. All right. Uh, That wraps up our Sweet 16. Uh, Soul Warden edges out Gravecrawler on the back of uh, ChatGPT's uh, help there. Uh, Next round. The field is narrowing down. Birds of Paradise versus Sierra Ascendant. I mean, birds. No, I don't. I know how this gotta, is gonna end. It's gotta. I think uh, we're going to Chat GPT. I think, but uh, no. Wait, wait. Who else is gonna we, go for birds? It's birds. It's birds. I'm going for birds with Tomer. Oh really? I, I, oh yeah. I mean, Sierra Ascendant. I I have taken back my criticism of it being overrated in 2023. I have learned uh, that it's actually strong. But Birds of Paradise, it makes a mana. It, it, it makes a mana. Overrated. Like it's very. No, I I don't think Birds is overrated. I do think like, ah, oh boy, like I do think I would rather play Land Ramp in a lot of decks. But there are certainly many many decks where I think Mana Dorks are better than Land Ramp, and Birds of Paradise is just like the best the best Mana Dork. So I'm going Birds. I think they're both excellent for their respective colors. Like green is all about creature synergy. Uh, I think this is I have just a better. But I think Birds of Paradise is just the better one drop. Sarah Sun is amazing, though, and it's amazing in white in particular because it can use all those white synergies we talked about. But birds. I can't Grim. believe Seth the Green with birds. Yay. Birds. I, well, Team this birds. one, I, I, I'm going to go with Sarah Ascendant. Oof. Sarah Ascendant is just like, like <laughs> actually useful here, right? Because I mean, uh, in that, like, you will, you will threaten them, they can, maybe they ramp or whatever, but, like, whatever, at least I got to chunk a ton of damage out of this, and then when the inevitable sweeper comes for my ascendant, at least I gained some life and lowered someone else's. I, I don't know, I, Can't I... you say the same thing about birds? You'd be like, alright, it does something useful, it literally ramps, ramping is useful, and then when it, when yeah, it inevitably dies, at least I got useful. to cast my mana three drop on useful. turn two. <laughs> mana dorks aren't useful, though. Like they, they just, they're nowhere near rampant growth and, and all of those, like actually just having ramp. Like you don't, you don't value wise getting green a mage. Three drop on turn why two. is green exactly. mage crim no. dropping some truths i would take out birds of paradise and put in a basic forest all right i have a deck wow. Wow. Chat GPT. wow so that brings us to chat Come gpt on. We're, right we're good we're, chat gpt got us tomer it's good it's from alpha it's kind of it's yeah, kind of yeah, alpha it's, it's been it'll, buying it'll its way into the heart of chat gpt for 20 <laughs> 25 years 30 years <laughs> It's thinking. Consider it's dumped. Consider your oh. commander's color identity and the overall strategy of your deck when making the final decision. Birds of Paradise is generally the safer and more versatile choice for commander yeah. decks with various <laughs> strategies, while Sarah Ascendant is more specialized for life gain themed decks. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it literally job, jumps it, it, it literally oh my god uh, <laughs> you know what this thank chat you. GPT thank ain't you. so bad after all See, tell me, tell me it's coming around to the AI takeover <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my opinion on it has shifted somehow alright <laughs> yes Better mother roots versus spore frog come on Set- Chose so both of these you know, so you know, you want me uh, and expect me to go with the fog, and I do love, I do love fogs, and I love spore frog, but I think Mother Runes is just the better card. Like I think Mother Runes is like a staple level card. Where spore frog is something like for recursive decks and very, very strong in those decks. But I'm, I'm going with Mother Runes. I don't think the frog should have made it to round two, but it sure as hell isn't making it to the semifinals. <laughs> Come on, Mother Runes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, it's Mother of Runes, right? Oh. Like, Mother of Runes is so good. <laughs> Richard's going Fog. Richard's got to go Fog. Yeah, do whatever. You know he's going Fog. It it's irrelevant. <laughs> I think Mother of Runes is just stone unplayable along with birds. Wow. So that this is an unplayable semis bracket for me. You have a but uh, you can just uh, have to exile it to ramp. <laughs> you could. You could also path the Frog, though. So I don't know. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> you also want to put true. This in, in your in your Baragond deck? It protects your Baragond. I told you, I'm cutting. It's cut. It used to be it's in the deck. Up. I don't even oh. tutor up with Ranger. It, like, you most likely get swept away 
like people don't do the spot removal and you have flawless you have other ways of protecting that mother runes is just non-utility i'd rather get uh, a more utility focused one drop like literally any other white one drop right s percent no weather wayfair soul warden etc so i actually mm -hmm. don't like mother runes at all right i obviously don't like giver runes either uh but yeah i don't like this slow onboard trick so that is irrelevant. Uh, the semis will be interesting. I don't mm -hmm. know who to toss my card for, but that's, <laughs> that's in the future. Esper Sentinel versus Weathered Wayfarer. Uh, Battle cool. of the White One Drops. I love, I love Weathered Wayfarer, but Esper Sentinel is just, it's so good. Weathered Wayfarer does have the upside of potentially drawing you a card every single turn for one mana, but it also can just die without doing anything. Esper Sentinel, it's not often going to die on turn one. If your opponent wants to kill it, they're casting a removal, you're probably drawing a card off of it. Uh, and it just has so much upside if you start pumping its power. It's an artifact, which is super scary and gives it more synergy. So, Weathered Wayfair, really good in mono-white catch-up ramp decks. Esper Sentinel, good in any deck. So, I'm, I'm an Esper Sentinel fan. I mean, Ezra Sentinel could just do nothing at tables if people are casting creatures. Like, that is the downside. It's where just the, one mana Thalia, could also, right? Yeah, whether we're even, because they pay nothing. for the first one, and then, then all the rest of the spells are free, right? So it's not even one mana Thalia. But then you can pump it, too. Yeah. And Weather Warfare also could do nothing if you're uh, on parity with everybody's lands. That is also a risk if nobody's actually, like, ramping in green or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, you guys say what you want. Wow, Tori is wow. 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 oh. really thinking. To me, this seems obvious. It's. I mean, this one probably Esper Sentinel. <laughs> Crim's just salty. It's not changing outcast in the bracket. <laughs> yeah. There's no two or block of a one drop that didn't on make it. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Every, I'll, every... I'll, I'll put the spotlight on Tori because I'm going Weathered Wayfarer. Oh, so in, in mono white, it's not even close. It's Weathered Wayfarer. Okay. But if you're playing a five color deck, Weathered Wayfarer is hard to use. You wouldn't run Weathered Wayfarer. No. Esper Sentinel gets the nod there. But in yeah. mono white, like, you want your opening hand to be land tax or Weathered Wayfarer. And I'm going to use yeah. a Seth argument that Esper Sentinel is card draw, but there are many, many, many ways to draw cards in white. There's like zero ways to tutor mm. an arbitrary land. There are mm. ways to tutor a plane. So if you have mm. like, I don't know, a Mist Veil Plains or something mm. that you want to get, fine. But to get an arbitrary land, that is so powerful that... It's an expedition map. That is a good argument. Expedition map. Uh, that's that's three mana and once only, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Weather Wayfarer, like in Mono White, it's not even close. Like I would always start with Weather Wayfarer above Esper Sentinel and Mono White. It's the five color decks that, that uh, mess with it, but you know, I'm a Mono White player, so Weather Wayfarer. Oh, uh, you know what? Oh, I want to. What's your answer, Tomer? I'm actually, I, I'm going Esper Sentinel. I think it has more more place outside of just Mono White, which which kind of pushed me over to. I, have, I have both convincing. in my like Zendru deck, so who knows? I don't know. <laughs> it's just a Jessica. Oh. <laughs> Wait, are you are you switching it up, Seth? Are you oh. switching it up? Nah, I, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna almost very. You almost got me. You almost got me. But so, I like, really like Weather just goes in so many more decks. But yeah, yeah. You know what? I want to know what what ChatGPT thinks. I'm saying Weather Wafer. Let's let's put it to the tiebreaker. Is this legal? Can we do this? Can, do <laughs> this? Can we rig the results the rules. Just, to, just to do this? I really like That's both cheating. of them. That's the problem. That Tomer went from cringing every time <laughs> Chad GPT <laughs> came on to trying to get an answer out of it. Uh... <laughs> All right. Weathered Wayfarer versus Esper Sentinel. Uh, let's see what Chad GPT has to say about this. What if this goes poorly, Tomer? It's all your fault. <laughs> I don't know. I like both of them. Oh, wait, this is the soft answer. Let's see if uh, ChatGPT comes to a conclusion. <laughs> oh, this is so soft. Okay, we got we to gotta rephrase by... Uh, <laughs> side with Tomer, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm asking again. Ooh, okay, okay. So I asked in Commander this time. So I actually think if you just ask ChatGPT a second time, it'll give you a straight answer if it gives you a non-answer the first time. I think this is the, the hack. This is fun. In Commander, between Weathered Wayfarer and Esper Sentinel, Esper Sentinel is generally the stronger and more impactful card. 
assuming that your commander deck has access to white mana for its casting cost. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Hey, I don't you, know if I can trust Chat GPT after that call. They're both white cards. cards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm good with I'm good with either of them though. I really uh, like both of them. Sad to see one of them have to go. Tell we're but... just trying not to make a decision. I Someone's really like win, both Tomer. Of them. Someone's got to win. <laughs> They're both this my is here versus Soul Warden. Oh no, Soul Warden. Okay, same argument. Soul Warden's way more replaceable than Vizira Seer to me. Vizira Seer, yes, there's other sack outlets, but free repeatable sack outlets are fairly rare, especially ones that cost one mana. There's only two of them, I believe. Soul Warden, you know, there's so many ways to gain life. It's great, but I think Vizira Seer is just more uh, a more impactful and unique card. So you would say, just for the logic, so if there was another, a functional, like a identical reprint of Vizira Seer with a different name, and we had the exact same thing. You'd be Viserys here is now weaker because there is a a functional reprint of it with a new name. Well, I'm I'm thinking of it from the perspective of I'm building a commander deck. I have to go without one of these cards. Would I rather go without Viserys here in my sack deck or Soul Warden in my life gain deck? And the answer is definitely Soul Warden in my life gain deck because I can find something else that does like 95% of its job. When Viserys but, here, it's a lot harder to find that card that's doing the same thing at the same rate. But aren't we defining it as a what? what are the, what's the most powerful card period? Not what you can go the most without and replace. Well, it's not then, what's then the most replaced. That's still Viserys here, right? Mm, yeah. That's that's think, even more so Viserys here because then oh no, you gained a life. Oh no, you gained more life. I think okay, cool. here is, Show me is the win better, con yeah. because you do have fifty-two different other ways to gain that life. That's not the concern. It's the payoff of how you win with all that life that matters. But it's, it's also how you gain the life. It's like these one one-time triggers and they work so well with like life gain payoffs that's that's what really makes it so good but uh, spying because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that's like whenever you gain one more life so if you gain like five life at a time it's like okay whatever it doesn't really matter but uh, oh it's gaining too much life i see so if oh boy no it's I'm a way so it gets it. it's multiple it's, triggers it's multiple oh triggers. i see so it's, it's better to yeah. gain one life at a time than it is yes. to gain like five life, life at once one yeah. Yeah. yeah it's better to have five you gain one life triggers than one trigger of you gain five life that's true i would agree with that but this year's here just wins games it sacks stuff and you die and it scries i don't know i'm confused i don't know both did great. you choose okay i will choose it's very close. I still think Soul Warden. Only because it's Ooh. the underdog. Even though it's not really an underdog, it's like in 6 seed. <laughs> you can play it in just a generic deck. <laughs> you don't even need the yeah. life gain synergies. It's and true. yes, you can play Viscerous here in generic deck, but Soul Warden will do work for you. I guarantee you. Like people have this belief that, oh, life gain, you know, life gain is overrated, right? Like, yes, if you spend six mana and gain six life, it's terrible. But if you spend one mana, gain 40 life in a game of Commander, you would play that card, okay, in a generic random deck. So I'm going to vote Soul Warden just to get its name out there, just so people try it more. Although I think they're actually, like, very close. They're, like, neck and neck, almost 50-50. Uh, I'm going to go Soul Warden. Hmm. I mean, I would play Soul Warden in more decks, but seriously, I'm only playing in sack decks. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna switch with Richard. I, I think I'm it's, going, it's I'm gonna go Soul Warden. Deck, Soul Warden. Like you can play it in more decks, and I use that argument with Birds of Paradise versus Heritage Druid way back <laughs> an hour and a half ago when we started this cast. That was my first argument. So I think I gotta I gotta remain consistent. And is, I'm gonna go with Soul Warden. Uh, I'm gonna go. I, I have to go for Sarah here only because yes, you could put Soul Warden in generic decks. But I think outside of, like, go wide decks and life gain decks, I wouldn't. You know? Like, Birds of Paradise, I'm going to put in generic decks. Mother of Runes, generic decks. Esper Sentinel, generic decks. Soul Warden, I have to be in a specific archetype to use it, or otherwise I'm not. And at that point, Viserys Seer, same, same argument, so I'm going Viserys Seer. <laughs> I mean... So we had a little switcheroo there. Uh, <laughs> Krim, are you, am, am, I, am I surprised that Seth, who advocates for Soul Sisters every other week in Modern, <laughs> switched over to I tried to, to get Soul away Warden. with it. I tried to avoid it, but it you <laughs> draw me back in. <laughs> Seth, open your eyes, Soul's, my dude. <laughs> it's going to happen, Krim. Sooner or later, Soul Sisters is going to take over. Just give it time. How? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Dude, how is so, so, so this is a two-two Sarah's split then, here. right? We're back Me to a, we're back Soul to Morden. a two-two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, one time. I'm asking one time. All right. <laughs> all right. Chat GPT. If I had to choose one card between Viscera Seer and Soul Warden for a commander deck without specific knowledge of your deck's strategy or color identity, I would recommend Viscera Seer. Thank. <sighs> All right, <laughs> that's yes! that's fair. Is so it, I'm telling you though, Soul Sisters is coming. It's gonna come when we revisit this podcast in a couple of years. The, the Chat GPT will know the. Oh, the no, that's Richard, Richard, we're also, Richard, we're also Richard, Richard, trending a oh, very oh, wait, high bias up. towards <laughs> white on. one drops. Richard? I notice. I mean, doesn't white just have the best one drops though? Are we biased or do they just have the best one drops? I mean, we're gonna find out. But I, I'm team on on uh, a certain other color right now. Okay, okay. We we are we are we are headed to the round of four. Birds of Paradise or Mother Runes? Mom, those are two classics. Birds. birds. Mom. Birds. Mom. Mom. Mom protecting so a creature protecting Caca. a creature's great, but making mana is greater. <laughs> and plus you get Tomer's spirit sound effects if you vote for bird. So bonus. Richard, it's a bird. You are the bird. It's a bird. You're man. the bird guy. Yeah. I don't play in the bird deck. Where else would yeah. it go? But you, you just got one of rooms. This is actually a hard one for Richard. I actually he, so he hates I, both I have of these decks cards. that are natural homes <laughs> for both of these cards, and I don't play any of them. And I own a place that are mother runes, by the way. I play zero of them. It's cool. okay. It's one of the best ramp cards. It's it's a one drop ramp. It's a, a one drop ramp. It lets you play your three drops on turn two, and it's perfect mana fixing. It taps for one of any color without any hoops. Even even delighted halfling, which I think is even better than it. Even that one is only limited to legendary. This one is not. You could play any three drop uh, and tap it for colors. Like it's mana fixing. It's like. It's good. It, it lets you play your like, good get ramp punched in the faster. spine or punched in the head. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I, I'm going to choose birds. <laughs> Why? There we go. I'm going to choose yes. birds. All right. What, what, no, what, what is the actual result? Mana. You're too disappointed to be listening. Three, three, one, three, one. <laughs> three one. Uh, one birds. <laughs> Not even the good. National Geographic secret layer birds <laughs> could save this. this. Yo, this, this this whole bragging thing has been poor, like just it's Graham. been lost ever since the first round exit. So <laughs> so at this point, Would, you know what? You can just tell me whatever the results Slither are. Slither blade, changeling outcast has been robbed. <laughs> yeah, goblin it, welder. It was the rats. Like, it like, was the rats. Goblin, 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 goblin welder, dude. Come on. <laughs> Can get back my Ragavan? <laughs> like, come on! <laughs> All right, next round: Esper Sentinel versus Viscera Seer. Sentinel. I mean, Sentinel, easy, 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 easy. Like, which one do you put in a generic deck? Sentinel. Which one do you put in a generic deck? Esper Sentinel. Which one draws cards? Esper Sentinel. Which one's an True. artifact? Esper Sentinel. But, but scrying too is drawing a card, right? Assistant. How many scries can you pick off with the Fisher Seer? Mm, that is mm. also true. <laughs> Why draw your win con when you have the win con right there? <laughs> and the Fisher Seer is the win con. You don't need to draw. You more. know, Seth would answer, but I could draw into something even better, like a win con. I, I, I could draw into something better than winning the he's, game. He's lost so many games that way. <laughs> Wait, Free sack reaction? outlet. Free sack oh. outlet. Oh, okay. On a body that's reoccurable uh, easily, oh. I'm I'm choosing Viserys here. That is a more powerful card Dang. than Esper Sentinel to me. Yeah, Richard, yeah. Esper Sentinel. It's not even close. <gasps> uh, yeah, I I figured it doesn't matter. Again, <laughs> I told you, y'all just Grimm. choose whatever. Poor Chris, choose whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just he was whatever. trying to represent Poor the Grimm. black card here. <laughs> he uh, tried. Oh, God. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to play Uno by myself. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. The points don't matter. Uh, oh. Esper Sentinel. Three oh. I should have been. I'm going to go back to signing my tokens. I'm this going is... back to signing our you tokens. Didn't finish okay. It? Grand Dude, this finals. Is hard. Grand finals. Oh, this is an easy keep for me. Grand finals. This is actually number one and number two in rankings in cards, <sighs> which tells you something because Birds of Paradise has been around since Alpha. 
It's been yeah. reprinted like a billion times in every set. Esper yep. Sentinel was Modern Horizons two, one, two. I yeah, it's it a fairly two, new yeah. card. So, it's... Birds of Paradise or Esper Sentinel, Seth. This is so tough. This is very like. Oh, I think Esper Sentinel is. I think I'd play Esper Sentinel in more decks. It's card draw versus ramp, the two best things in Commander. It pains me to vote for a Modern Horizons card over <laughs> over something like Birds of Paradise, which is just like so iconic and such a classic magic card. But I think when it comes down to it, I with all these conversations about you know land ramp versus mana dork ramp, I do agree that land ramp is better than mana dork ramp, and there's more decks where I'm gonna be rampant growthing and cultivating than birds of paradising. As per Sentinel, I'm a true believer everything from mono white to five color i can just throw that in my deck like rhystic study and get value out of it so i think i gotta go esper sentinel even though it hurts to uh to to, to uh, disregard the birds it's birds okay esper sentinel really good but i think people are overlooking that it's not always card draw like like literally we've had games where it doesn't draw a single card like when when phil played it also if you happen to be up against people who have creatures that can play instead of non-creatures it can do stone cold nothing before it dies birds of paradise though it's like the definition of consistent you can do turn one birds and then you have your three drops on turn two. There's very few cards that do that. There's like elves and whatnot, but the elves only tap for green most often, right? This one taps for all colors. It's mana fixing. It's it's literally one drop into three drop on your next turn. It's it's very good. It's it's very good and very consistent. And it doesn't rely on your opponents just feeding you. <laughs> Which they just shouldn't happen. In most games, it happens sometimes in our playgroup for some reason, but it shouldn't. Can't figure out why. Okay. <laughs> Birds! But this is very This is very easy. I can't believe there's even a decision here. There's outdated and overrated, so I'm going to just flip a coin. <laughs> oh, damn. All right, cool, Birds. <laughs> sure. <laughs> outdated versus overrated. Oh, my God. Richard, you <laughs> know. Birds of Paradise is how Richard Garfield intended magic. As per Sentinel is from Modern Horizons 2, it's an abomination. Yeah, so outdated. Is it, is, it, is it? Does it come in in universes beyond? No, it's from Dominar. Get out of here. I believe it's called 30th Anniversary, all right? <laughs> I told you, I will take a Birds of Paradise and Sharpie Forest on it and put it in my deck. And I will wow. take a Plains and Sharpie Esper Sentinel on it and stick it in my oh. deck. Like, it is... Not even close. Like, Birds of Paradise actively loses you cards, right? Because, or act, actively loses you games, because you play the birds, you have committed a creature to the board, now you gotta commit more because you've ramped up. So you, like, play more creatures to the board just to get all cleaned up in one nice sweeper for, you know, anyone. Uh, whereas Esper Sentinel lets you draw cards, right? The reverse of losing cards to a sweeper. Uh, so I... I was like I saying soaring is, is bad because it gets blown up by like. So when Air birds well. taps for two mana, right, and is a much harder Dang. type in artifacts than a creature, like we'll talk, right? Not <laughs> all colors repellus? can sweep artifacts. All <laughs> but, colors but, can sweep birds. But the Esper Sentinel is banned, right? <laughs> always draw you cards. Like, what if you just play an Esper Sentinel and everybody drops creatures and then your Esper Sentinel dies and that's it? Like, 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 even the worst case, like it draws, like, say, two cards. Okay, the worst case is zero, right? But how often does that happen? In a very medium to bad case, it draws, like, one to three cards. That's an ancestral recall. In the Seth is at my table case, you draw like twelve. Hey, like what? What, gotcha. what card is like one mana draw twelve? <laughs> right? <sighs> like like what? That's like absurd, right? This one is like no no requirements from your opponents. You just turn one, then turn three. You have a three drop on the battlefield. It's so good. It's so clean and consistent. And yeah, okay, it dies eventually, but I still got my value. I still curved out way ahead of the rest of the table. That means I start drawing cards way earlier than everybody else too. <laughs> So you can turn your Birds of Paradise into an Esper Sentinel is what you're saying. Well, yeah, because if of I, the mana it makes you can... my, If I get my value, if my commander is my value engine, and I get my value engine out a full turn earlier and start valuing off it, then yeah, Birds of Paradise can die and I still got my value out of it. It could die. It's fine. Cram, you know it's Esper Sentinel. You know. I, I already you voted. I, I, you know. I, flipped, I flipped a coin. I, I, flipped I know. Birds. Uh, it so doesn't matter. Is that a tie? I, that's a, that's I choose a tie, birds. Right? 
Uh, Seth well, chose birds. I, I no, well, I chose us percent. No, 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 I chose us percent. I did not choose birds. Oh, I thought we were together. Why are we? You should just deal with birds up till now. GPT. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it'd be easier. All right, come on, Chat GPT. Uh, does Chat GPT value history or newness? It's gonna be birds, hundred well, percent. Whatever Richard it's has coded into it from the grave, <laughs> Ragavan or Goblin, <laughs> Slitherblade. Must between Esper Sentinel and Birds of Paradise for a generic deck without specific knowledge of your strategy or color identity. Birds of Paradise is generally the more versatile and reliable choice. Thank you. Sure. Chat GPT made Thank by Richard you. Garfield. <laughs> by Richard Garfield. <laughs> I knew that Richard was a bird lover and was like, I wow, computing, what is bird? <laughs> there you have it, Birds of Paradise. Are we happy with that? The number one ranked card in EDH rec because it's been in every deck since the inception of Commander itself and Magic the Gathering itself. <laughs> Grandfathered in. Look, grandfathered in. Should have been sent. If no. I learned been anything S%, about no. this process, it's that nobody ends up happy especially the comment section. Let us know which one you thought was going to be winning and which one's the best in CDA. Uh, I guess. <laughs> May as well, all right, because you're going to hear about it anyways. Not in CDH, dude. Not in CDH. Hold on. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's ask that real quick. In CDH, what's the best one? That's for uh, No contest, Mystic, right? Mystic Remora. As Mr. Well, Gamora. it's not a creature ah, yeah. though, Mr. so it doesn't Gamora, count. It can that be. That doesn't count. It's not on our list. It's not a creature. It would be Sentinel, know, though, wouldn't it? You, I think Esper uh, is a better one. Ragavan, and, because everybody's going to be running like all the zero drop artifacts, right? Like everybody has that. You're yeah. not going to be like even the creature decks have like all the Moxen and stuff. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. That. Actually, probably Esper Sentinel, sure of the two at the end. I think Ragavan would go us, no, way higher. Let us know like, CDH players. I guess. If it was CDH, I think Ragavan would have went further. I would have voted yes. Ragavan over Spore Frog, at least, and maybe Mother of Runes, too. So I think Sarah Ragavan was it. very underrated by not being CDH. All right. Sarah Send it, yeah. Sarah Send Powers up that ad nauseum. <laughs> right. yeah, ad nauseum forever. Right. While weakening also, somebody else's ad nauseum. Versus Birds of Paradise, let me know in the comments. Section. Or any other mana dork. There's tons of one drop mana dorks. There are many. Uh, yeah. Death Rite Shaman is in there. Oh, yeah. uh, there's like the yeah. exalted ones, like Noble Hierarch, Ignoble Hierarch. Um, there, there's the actual elves. A million elves. With elves. Yeah. Yeah, elves. But yeah, so Birds of Paradise oh, takes it home. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, anything we, we missed? Anything that was that was kind of lost in the, in the regular season that maybe deserved a shot here? This whole bracket uh, was lost. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Whole <laughs> bracket was lost. So is the losing team that complains all the time. This is that rigged. Is You're gonna have to Lose have a the the review the refs. You got to retune the refs. The refs. The Check the tapes. <laughs> all right. So thank you everyone for listening, and we'll see you all back next week. Bye.